The way it floats in the water, so serenely in the moonlight and the sunlight, you would have thought it was meant to be there, pure and unyielding and as solid as silk. She floats there, a mystery as deep as the moon and the mind of God. The Civil War had been over for 20 years. In the wake of devastation, Richmond, the Confederate capital, was coming back to life. Hotels, factories, and other businesses were springing up. The modern world of telephones and electricity was close at hand. And then one night, something terrible happened. The next day, workers found the body of a young woman floating in the city's reservoir. She was pregnant. Investigators at first suspected suicide, but a closer examination revealed signs of foul play. The search for a possible killer was on. For months, the city, and ultimately the nation, would follow this tragic story as one curious clue led to another. A watch key, a red shawl, a torn note. I wanted to find out what had happened and why. And beyond that, I wanted to live for a while in that time and place. I had a couple of decades of writing under my belt, and when I encountered this story, I felt as if it had been waiting for me. Where the reservoir embankment once stood, all you can see now is a low-rent apartment complex and a newer cemetery. The victim was a country girl named Lillian Madison. The suspected killer, her cousin Tommy Claviers, an ambitious young lawyer. He cut across Hollywood Cemetery after leaving the reservoir that Friday the 13th, a snowy night long ago. Presidents Monroe and Tyler, General Jeb Stewart, and thousands of other Confederate soldiers lay buried here. Jefferson Davis would soon join them. The prosecutor would bring those ghosts back to life to try to convict Tommy at trial. Down near the river, you could hear and smell the blast furnaces of Tredegar Ironworks. During the war, it was the biggest industrial complex in the South. It continued pumping out iron for many decades. Tommy came near here and threw something into the river. You can see Belle Isle across the way, more pristine now than it was back then. In the novel, Tommy and Lily stop in at the Magdalen House, a home for unmarried mothers. It later became a refuge for pensioners and then for orphans. Main Street was a lively bustle of street vendors, carriages, and people, black, white, foreign, rich, poor, and on the make. These iron front buildings arose during that time of change. And this was the American Hotel, where Lily spent the last night of her life. Thomas Jefferson designed Virginia's state capital to look like a Roman temple. It was and is the heart of the city. Aaron Burr was tried for treason here in 1807. And it was here that Robert E. Lee accepted command of the Army of Virginia. Like many men of business in the 1880s, Tommy used the library on the second floor. Lily's body was taken to the almshouse for identification and autopsy. The building served as a hospital during the war. It later became a nursing home and still provides housing for seniors. Lily was buried in a family plot in Oakwood Cemetery. I had to go to some trouble to find her grave, but once I did, I felt even more bound to tell her story. Like Tommy, I came to Richmond as an outsider. I'm a lifelong Southerner but somehow I'd never gotten to know Richmond. It was a dark mystery, inside of which lay many hidden secrets. This was one. Tommy's home was a day's journey away back then. Post-war Richmond held new enticements, theaters, saloons, and houses of ill repute. Yet the things he loved, his family, his church, pastoral beauty, were back at home. His heart lay there as well with his cousin, a poor relation. His brother was in love with the same girl, and so a tragedy unfolded.